Growing takes time. Ranch Systems has the tools to help you quickly get the information you need so you can get on with your day. Check your water, crop status, and weather from real sensors in your field. To learn more, contact us today. Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with American Vineyard Magazine reporting to you from the annual Unified Wine and Grape Symposium here in downtown Sacramento. I'm here with Mike Vizeth, who always does a great job. He's a wine economist uh, with the State of the Industry Address, moderating that. I wanted to talk with you about uh, what's going on, an issue with between Australia and China for, what, over a year now, and how it's impacting something all the way across the world in the wine industry could be impacting our wine industry, even on this side. No, that's right. So thank you, Matthew, for, for asking. And, and the Australia situation starts a few years ago with the uh, pandemic, COVID pandemic, where a not very wise Australian politicians sort of suggested that China needed to be more forthcoming about the origins of the COVID uh, situation. And so the Chinese put a more than 200% tariff on Australian wines. China was their main that's their right. major consumer, right. right? It used to be that uh, 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 that the UK was Australia's biggest export market, and then the US with Yellowtail was Australia's biggest export market. And then, just in between five years, between about 2015 and 2000, the, their exports surged to Australia so that they sold more wine in Australia than they did in the UK and the US combined, an enormous amount, and that went from that big amount down to zero, uh, all of a sudden creating this huge, this huge surplus of wine that is only in the last two vintages got even worse, of course, because they, the, so the harvest crops. come in, yeah. and, it, and, so, and so now um, Australian wine, red wine especially, because uh, the Chinese market was a red wine market, and so that's what they, they planted to go to that. This is now uh, flooding the world markets um, at, uh, at ex extremely low prices. Some prices as low as uh, um, some products can be purchased for 20 cents per gallon landed in the United States, which is just, uh, how do you compete with that? So it's, Australia has a problem to try to figure out how to open up that market again, because it's unlikely they can find another market that can absorb that huge amount of wine. And uh, for the rest of us here in the U.S., it represents this sort of um, uh, tug on the market that if you are trying to raise the cost of your wine and in, in any times of inflation, in yeah. times of inflation, if you're trying to raise it and there's any way that someone can buy the Australian red wines and blend them in or something and compete, well, it's going to keep you from being successful and keeping your margins or getting margins in the first place. So it's a problem. Right, so if growers are wondering why you know, their costs are going up and their prices haven't really changed that much, uh, well, th th what happens all the way across the world can have a major impact. And so it's, it's, it's really a difficult thing to, it is. to deal with, especially making business decisions. Uh, but we certainly hope that they'll figure things out. And I guess we got to be careful what we say, right? Yep. You know, be especially if you're yeah. a politician. <laughs> so thank you very thank much you, for Matthew. taking the time. Yeah. Read more about these things in American Vineyard Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.